What's up guys, my name is Ryan45678 and welcome back to the Edger Bike Project. In this video, I'm going to be drilling out the jack shaft so that the torque converter can fit on it with this bolt. So in the last couple of videos, we got the, the frame cut and welded together. And this is the next one of the next steps that I need to do that doesn't involve welding in order to make the drivetrain work properly. So I figured I'd do that uh, in lieu of welding today because I don't have all the parts together that I need yet. And I don't really want to drag the welder out for just a few pieces. So uh, what do we need to do to get this thing to screw into this? We need to put this on the lathe, drill a hole the proper size, and tap that hole. So uh, let's go do that. All right, uh, so the first thing we need to do is determine what size this thing actually is, threads and diameter. So an easy way to do that is either using a tap, which I have, uh, this one doesn't fit. I've tried all the ones that look like they would fit that we have. It's probably one of these that's missing, which and not this one, obviously. Always seems to happen. But anyway, the other option is you can use a thread gauge. So if you, uh, ah, I'm stupid. You just push this little thing right here. That's all I needed. But anyway, you get these out. You start checking the pitches. It's probably not that coarse. Nope. And you want it to line up perfectly. And obviously, none of these have so far. It's not, not even a matter of light showing through. It's just a matter of it don't fit. So this one looks good. This one actually, I think is actually the right pitch. We'll check, we'll double check the next size down just to make sure, but pretty confident that that's the right, the right pitch. The next pitch, and it does not fit. So we have our pitch. And just to double check before we read it off, this is it. That is 20. Okay, so it's common. It's pro this, you know what? This is probably a quarter 20. Now that I think about it, well, a lot of things are quarter 20. So just to confirm my suspicions, they may still be wrong. This looks a little bit skinnier, so it's not its not a quarter 20. It's probably more like a 3 eighths 20 or something like that, but it is 20. I have not found a tap so far that would fit this. Well, I've found the quarter 20, but I haven't found anything really bigger than that with the 20 pitch thread. One thing I could do to measure the bolt is use some calipers to get a general idea of the size. I think you would just keep the thread size with it, or the threads as part of the diameter, because when you drill the hole, you drill a slightly smaller. So that's about 0.31. Let me see what that is. 5 sixteenths is about 0.31. So this is a 5 sixteenths bolt. I don't think I have any taps of that size, so I'm going to have to go find one. But that doesn't stop me from drilling the hole. All right, so next uh, we need to find out exactly what size hole to drill because you don't want to drill a 5 16 hole, otherwise you won't have any threads. So one little neat tool is these, or you can, there's these big ones up here, uh, but I'll put a link to where you can get one of these in the description. Uh, you take, uh, let's see, 5 16 you can see that the decimal equivalent, and it gives you the tap size. So tap size, we need to find tap size here, which is 5 8, 5 16 right here, 5 16 don't, don't worry about the threads, we can change that. So 5 16 yeah, if I'm reading this correctly, then for a 5 16 tap, I need a 17 64 drill bit. I'm going to verify that with, with the, a search engine. So, okay, here we go. This is a better chart that I found online. Let's see, I need to drill 5 16 5 16 18. Uh, yeah, 17 64 if I have one. Which, if you look at the decimal equivalent, is about a quarter. So I could get away with a quarter if I need to. Alright, uh, so the first thing we're going to need to do is check this thing. Make sure you get it as centered as possible. Like that. And I'm going to try not to get these teeth on the, the keyway. And then tighten it. And it should be fine. And make sure you take the key out. Otherwise, it will go flying that way. And on this side, we're going to put this chuck in here. It kind of... Well, you have to tighten it down. Okay, apparently that doesn't isn't a chuck that goes in there. This is the chuck that goes in there. I'm fairly certain, anyway. No. All right, so next thing, uh, take one of these. This chuck uh, just fits in there like that. And you use that to drill. So first, we're going to start with a, I believe this is a 1 8 drill bit. Not 100% sure on that. But it's definitely way smaller than what I need, and it's, it'll be a good first start. And I know you're supposed to use lubricant when you do stuff like this, but I've never done it. But, uh, I think it'll be okay. And again, don't uh, don't leave the chuck in the drill. It won't matter as much for this one because it doesn't spin, but still, you shouldn't get in the habit of that 
Uh, next, this is a 3 8 so we'll do that in a second. All right, so now that the lathe is actually plugged in and uh, spinning the correct direction, we can start cutting. First, I'll uh, move this thing closer. Move it back a little bit. That's about right. Tighten it up. And turn the lathe on and start going. Ooh, that's pretty wobbly. I figured that. Let me see if I can take this and make it a little shorter so it's less wobbly. Like that. Yeah, just double checking that's not a broken bit too, so. Okay, once again. Slightly better. Not perfect. Um, I'll tell you what, we have this thing and I don't remember if that if its purpose is to cinder drill. I think it is. So uh, I'm gonna use this first and then drill the hole. So you can properly have it centered. Okay, that should do it. All right, let's see if we can do this for, for real this time. I think and it's a little bit wobbly still. So it's going though. That's good. So the bolts will need to go pretty deep in there. So we'll see if we can get the whole length. I don't know if we ought to do it. We'll try. It's going in surprisingly easy though, which is a good thing. Uh, I have broken these small bits before. I'm not careful. It's easy to do. You always do want to back out, back out a little bit every time, so you don't burn up the bit. Just go very slow and careful. You can see how slow I'm turning this. That's just the tick marks on the thing. Imagine how slow it's actually going on the, the bit. So yeah, we'll keep at this until it's done. All right, so you can go a little bit faster than I was going. You see if I, if I push it a little bit, chunks will start coming out. And it'll go a little bit quicker. There you go, you can see that. See how fast I'm going. You need to, do, you need to pretty much feel it though. You need to do, do it by feel. If you feel it getting too much pressure, then you need to back off. Or if you know you've been in there for a long time, then back off. See, so yeah, I'm gonna go up to here. I know you're not, you shouldn't, don't do this. Don't put your finger near the thing, but I'm gonna go back to here and then I'll call it call it good and then I'll switch to the, the bigger drill bit so almost there as you can see I think you may have bottomed out the drill though yeah you just bottomed out the drill so you probably shouldn't do this either but I'm gonna scoot it slightly closer technically you should stop before you do that but um, I'm not going to I'd rather be a little bit too deep than not deep enough because I don't want to have to redrill this just, yeah I lost it something. Hang on. Screwed something up here. There we go. That's good enough. That's as deep as I wanted to go. So we'll swap drill bits. This one's going to be very hot by the way. All right. Um, so my dad just told me, I didn't realize, um, you don't actually have to use a smaller drill bit. I think I must, I must have gotten that from drilling with a drill by hand because when you do that, you definitely do because otherwise you'll, you just can't hold on to it and it'll get stuck. So but um, anyway, we got the, the hole drilled about as deep as I want it to go. Uh, apparently, it, has, it also needs to be a little bit deeper anyway for the tap. I can do that with, with the actual size drill bit. Hey, what do you know? The drill bit that I picked up for the next size up is actually 1764 and I could not find one in here. It just happened to be the one that I pulled out of somewhere else. So that's great. Put that in there and we start drilling. All right, let's do it. Very well so far. Well, curlies are coming out perfect. So this does make it a little bit easier to drill through since it's already been drilled through the center. Shouldn't take nearly as long. Ah. Except when that happens. There we go, like that. That's that's about the right shape. A little tail like that. I guess I was pushing it a little bit too hard because it, it just kind of spun, even though I had it in there pretty tight. Yeah, those are beautiful. I'll let you guys know when it's about done. This is where you get some beautiful squeaking sounds. It's great. 
All right, so uh, right about here is where I need to go to. So uh, just keep going. This must be as far as I drilled with the smaller bit. I don't know. It's getting a little bit more difficult by a lot. All right, so as you can see, we're about at the right depth. Drilled up to here, which is more than enough. If I keep track of that. Yeah, that's way more than enough. So when we tap that, that'll be plenty of room for all the shavings to go down at the bottom and have more than enough threads. So that's perfect. Yeah, it's pretty hot. Not as much on this end, so. Yeah, that looks good. I'll let this cool off and see if I can't find a tap, but I have a feeling I'm gonna have to go buy one because it's an odd size. When I look for tap sizes and stuff on online, like drill drill charts and stuff, it doesn't list uh, 5 16 20, but they do exist. Yeah, that's that's awesome because look, this fits. It's acting like there should be threads in there, but there are no threads yet. So once there are, I think that'll be a really good fit. All right, so instead of buying a $10 tap, what I've done is I've found this bolt, which I'm 90% sure is also 5 16 uh, I'm gonna measure it to make sure. Uh, but it's not the same thread, so I can use a tap that I already have on this thing to, uh, to make it fit this bolt. And from the video that I saw on how to install the torque converter, this bolt goes on top. So as long as the thing slides into the holes, which it should because it's the same exact size, uh, again, I'll double check, uh, it should be fine. All right, so 5 16 is about 0.3125, I think. So if this measures that, uh, measure it here because these are kind of tapered Also, it's a little bit longer So if my crank if my jack shaft is a little bit short from what I estimated then that'll make it a little better I guess hopefully I don't know. Yeah, it's essentially 0 0.31 and something so It's good. It's right on all right. So just eyeballing the threads on this. I believe this will be 5 16 18 because the threads were more spaced out than on uh, the bolt I have. Let's find the 18, 18 right here. And it is, it is 18. So we need a 5 16 18 tap, which I do have and is a normal size, unlike 5 16 20, which apparently make they make taps for, but not very many. There we go. 5 16 18. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so uh, since you don't want to bottom out a tap, I'm going to make sure. I don't bottom out the tap. So this is as far as it goes down, right here. And on the na on the on the actual tap, that is pretty far. So I'm just gonna mark it on the tap. So don't go any further than that. That should be it, because uh, you don't you don't want to break off a tap in a hole. You'll basically never get it out. I mean, you can extract it with a tap extractor, but I've never had to do it, thankfully. But um, supposedly, it's a pain. All right, so what I'm going to do is put this thing in a vise so I can tap it, but I'm going to use a red rag to keep it from scratching it too much because I do need it to be able to fit in those uh, pillow block bearings without uh, hanging up on anything. So again, I'm going to try to keep the keyway out of the clamp I don't know, it might affect it, but I just don't want to take any chances, so tighten that. Looks good to me. Uh, tighten these to the bench, and that's good enough. I don't, eh, I guess there's only one, so that's good. That'll be good to tap. So double check, make sure it's the right tap. 5 16 18. And I can check with the threads in this thing. And yes, these are indeed the correct threads. This is the Harbor Freight tap set, by the way, this is where I got this from. I'll put a link to the description. It works. I've used it before. I haven't broken a tap, so we'll see. And if you've never tapped anything before, go watch a video on how to do it. Uh, but a brief explanation, you want to center it as much as possible. Go very slow, especially at the beginning, and especially as you get deeper. Uh, and every now and then, like every, every turn, or maybe even sooner than that, you want to back out so just go ahead and start try to get this centered it'll kind of find its own center but obviously if you if you get it all cattywonkers it it won't and you'll screw something up so see how how slow I'm, oh. 
See how slow I'm going? Very slow. Because these are, this is a delicate process. Okay. It's not quite caught on yet. I see it's starting to cut. I think it might have just started. Nope. So yeah, I'll back it off. Okay. This uh this thing doesn't like to work for some reason. Oh, it's left handed to red, that's why. My bad. I do not know why this thing refuses. Well, it's it's working okay. I'm gonna leave it like that like that. Because I don't wanna break this stupid tap. Okay, yeah, it's being really dumb. This uh does not want to go further. This is gonna take a while, I can already tell. Yeah. But it is it's going, so just be very careful. Slow and methodical with this. Yeah, it's really annoying that that thing, uh, you can't see it. So I'll show you. See, it does this. It doesn't want to stay triangled. So every time, when I when I go to screw it in, it has to shift. Okay, it didn't do it that time. Yeah, it's not doing it now. When I when I come out, it does that. I hope, hopefully you saw that. It shifts over to the other side. I have to coerce it out of the the tap hole, which is really, really annoying. Ah, I think I figured out why this thing would would want to slip, because I was trying to put it too low. You see these? This is probably what's keeping it. If I do this and line it up perfect, it, uh, like, a little bit higher than the thing, it lines up good. So I think that that should help. One thing I like to do, and I should probably especially do it on this one because it's a quarter inch hole. No, it, no, I take that back. I drilled the right size hole, 1764 uh, but if you did, a good idea might be, and I'll probably still do it with this, is to just do a little bit, back off. A little bit, back off. It's very slow, but I think it's better than doing like half a turn and then going back and having it break on you. And this thing's barely in there, and it already feels like it's going to break. Just from twisting it normally, very slowly. It feels like it's going to snap. Hopefully it doesn't, but we'll see. See, this is what I mean. It's like just going back and trying to chase, rechase the threads is they get stuck sometimes. <sighs> see, I don't even know right now. I'm going to take the tap out and see. Uh, looks okay. Maybe it's just not a sharp tap. I don't know. I'll keep on going. Sometimes it's good to run run it through a few times, kind of like you're, if you would, would chase the threads with a bolt. Do a little bit, and then it'll get stuck, so... Yeah, and go past it, run it through that tough spot a few times and kind of cleans it out. So I took the red rag off because it was scratching this thing. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I'll show you at the end. Uh, I'm just going to clamp it here. This part isn't really going to have anything clamped to it. The only part that really is is the back part, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So this is getting a little bit easier, it seems like. I don't have to, I don't feel like I'm about to break the tap and go, and it kind of goes a little bit like butter, about a quarter turn. Chase them a little bit. Another almost quarter turn, not quite. Chase them a little bit. Yeah, should be done pretty soon. Just gonna go slow and steady though. Okay, so it's kind of scary having the tap this far down in a hole, but I think I may have bottomed out. Uh, not on the not for the hole itself, but the shavings may have uh, caused it to bottom out early. But I'm about here, so I've got about another. Uh, third of an inch, half an inch to go, but I think I'm going to leave it because, well, the main reason being part of the torque converter that this bolts onto is a pulley, which is about that thick. So something like that, the jack shaft's going to go maybe half that distance. So uh, it's going to be more like this. And this bolt is a little long. I'll probably, I may cut this off if it's too long. Take the tap out very carefully. Chase the last little bit of threads. There we go. Look at that. Look how far down that is. That is that is a long hole to tap by hand. It keeps going. Keeps going. So, we got enough that if we cut this bolt off here, it'll be plenty of threads because there's obviously going to be... It's not going to go straight flush. And if we put it in here, 
it screws in. Yay. Let's see how far it goes. Just to see, uh, because I'd... it's going in pretty good. Uh, might be it. So yeah, I think if we cut that off, if we need to, we may not even need to do that. Um, it should be fine, because I, I don't see uh, this sticking out very far, because I, I did kind of get this jack shaft a little bit short. It's just barely going to be about right. See, this is what I was talking about with the marks on this, and the obviously this thing marked it too, but one mark is better than one long zzzz. But yeah, so that is that complete. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, at least not very much. So now I have this thing connect to where this thing can actually bolt on there. Oh, there's all the shavings. One thing I may have to do with this bolt is trim this head off a little bit because it's way bigger than the other one. And I looked at it and it's not very much clearance, so we'll see. Although it does actually go on top, so I don't think that'll be an issue now that I think about it. Yep, that should be perfect. Harbor Freight taps for the win and extra bolts lying around for the win also. Cool. All right, so yeah, this uh, this endeavor for this part of the edge bike has been successful. We got the jack shaft drilled and tapped for the bolt to hold on the torque converter. So yeah, don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more projects like this, including the edge bike. And as always, there are affiliate links in the description below if you want to support the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.